well uh the center of bahrain it's 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 a new center and it's a very good center um the invigilators are really helpful like they were all supportive uh even the examiners were very very generous and uh, most of the examiners were from uh, directly from british like mm. uh, so they they uh, because i think it was the first time that happened in bahrain that's the reason uh and uh, Uh, regarding my experience uh, experiences like that sir if you have like some of the normal uh, like daily all all were the daily cases or like that encountered in cases mm. i will uh, discuss with with all of you in a mm. bit and uh, i really recommend this center sir and uh, there will be any language problem translator yeah regarding the language yes sir there was an issue as as i am working in bahrain for the past Six years, so I have a good uh, command on Arabic, uh, mm. but but there was a language barrier, and mm. one of my short case uh, in respiratory case, uh, there was a guy with who was not even able to understand even a single word of English, so there was a language uh, interpreter with him, he was helping mm. it out, and I was trying my uh, when I saw it is taking too much time, so I started. uh like um by myself in little bit arabic which i, which I know mm. so i examining him in that um one uh, one abdominal case even the examiner was helping he mm. was translating uh for okay. me but it is taking it is taking uh, like you say the time will be double and we don't have much time in cases especially in the short cases mm. so most of uh, uh, the patients they are not uh, like good at english so that's that that a little bit issue is that is there yeah, but there is but a ling- uh, language interpreter is there there uh, so, yeah there is in some other station he was sitting there and if he is not there even the examiner uh, i think there were three arabic examiners with me okay so okay. yeah so they are helping they are helping yes exactly okay okay so those who are not uh, no arabic or like this uh, what do you think it's a good center those who are not working but uh, limited, actually sir the thing is that those, some except, other place also uh, want to go to what, the what, what i think um, except me and dr shanir uh, all hmm. of the candidates were arabs like uh, okay, okay. sudan okay. from most of them are from bahrain yes, yes. so yes. they were not having even a single issue Uh, that okay. that even doctor shani told me the same thing mm. that uh, so suppose if you are working in uh, this region there will be no problem any nationality exactly uh, exactly if, if, if we, we are working, and we, like little bit arabic i think uh, more than enough. all of us who are working, middle east yeah they they be fine but the person who are who are staying in india and pakistan i don't i don't uh, recommend them i think uh, their uh, pakistan come, indian come, centers are already already are a nice and very nice uh, very good mm-hmm. center uh, correct correct so because few candidate they want to know about this issue that uh, those who are not working they don't know arabic okay so uh, what they should do for the parents yeah uh, I, I, uh, my uh, suggestion to everybody is that that they will definitely help like but you know you will be get confused uh, mm-hmm. like uh, like for me um, i forgot to uh, do percussion from the front because i was not able to like explain him and mm-hmm. uh, the language uh, interpreter is also a nurse or like someone else and even my examiners mm-hmm. at that time was uh, was a britisher and an indian mm-hmm. examiner and they are not also good in arabic so that mm-hmm. can be a little bit issue otherwise the center itself is very very nice very nice mm-hmm. means overall your experience is good yes 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 and uh, your tips about those who are going to appear in the exam uh, your uh, some tips how you prepared and uh, what do my, you think that the other candidates should do my tips will be to everyone just join dr nasim ulada course that's it it will be more than enough for everybody who want to do long cases of uh, communication because i because alhamdulillah because of dr nasim i am able to get almost full marks in this uh these four uh, uh like uh, stations uh, regarding the short cases uh, i think the, everybody is uh, doing their daily practice so they can go with that but for all these communication and long cases one have to just be stuck with you sir 
and mm-hmm. one other thing i have a very good uh, colleague uh, dr shaini alhamdulillah she also passed with me so we, yes, yes 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 yeah so there i think <laughs> so both uh, yeah so there is an important thing you should have instead of a mentor a mentor is very very important but you should have a very good colleague as well we were doing daily discussions first i was doing with in the morning with sir then in the evening i am just doing daily uh, practices on the patient and even on my family members as well and uh, lastly in the night daily i was doing discussion with dr shaini that's that's how everybody should go uh, vakas uh, uh, someone is asking what is the uh, what was the difference in <clears throat> behar and raval pindi center uh i think yes 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 dr ismail has asked mm-hmm. uh dr ismail uh this difference i'm telling you frankly it's 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 on the luck i can say uh, mm-hmm. whatever the cases you are well prepared because i was very well prepared by dr nasim um, for the cushing uh, my long cases for cushing syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis so i was very well prepared by him and luckily alhamdulillah i got those two cases and in pakistan um i i, I not say the cases were weak because this is my uh, for, for everybody this is my second attempt my first attempt i was i gave it uh, from the raval pindi center what i think i live in bahrain uh, and this is a home to me uh, although i'm mm-hmm. i'm from pakistan but uh, it seems like i i was in another another place so i i was very like i i didn't have any proper sleep um i was just like my family was with me so i was so much like too much into a lot of things so already i was stressed out here there was no no such thing like that mm. so you don't have to move from another place uh, to give an exam that was a i think that was a big issue otherwise uh, i think raval pindi center is is a good center i don't i don't want to say anything that i feel so I, you should not give an exam to there because you people are already living there so i recommend you instead of moving <clears throat> uh from a different country i think if you have an opportunity alhamdulillah i got this opportunity and i got only i think sir um, maybe a month ah, yeah. Yes, one only month I, yeah month. only i had a one month only so i thought still it's a better opportunity for me because i'm living in bahrain and even, even it was a walking distance for me my exam center yeah. so i have no stress like this so that was an issue and rest i think um, the day dr smile it depends on the day how much uh, mm. which cases because i got chronic pancreatitis and another long case another long case was very very vague very difficult and still i don't know what it was mm. so, so that's that so depends the luck also favors na luck the luck also favors yeah, so dr vakas uh, Uh, on the day of the exam uh, your tips uh, what candidates should do okay sir so day of the exam <laughs> you should you have passed no you have to give some <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah definitely sir i you think you have gone through uh, it and you achieve your goal so uh, candidate yes. want to do okay yeah sure 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 so it will be i think most importantly you should relax uh, definitely it's not a phase uh, <laughs> not a yeah that you should but better just uh don't think about that much just uh, just think whatever you are well prepared of don't unnecessary uh, especially i when i was there uh, in in this my bahrain center i saw mm. some of uh, the two of the ladies they were um, even reading at that moment of time so mm-hmm. i was uh, i was surprised and you know sometimes you get so whatever you studied at the day of the exam just and mm-hmm. get ready for your luck whatever just it's 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 actually it's it's it it mostly depends on your luck and your skills it's a skill exam uh, what you have practiced that day you will remember yes so, exactly. Uh, exactly okay if you did not practice you you are not going to yeah you get you'll get panic so uh, like um, um i told you like uh, already sir you know how, uh, how much mm-hmm. marks i got so only uh, uh, one or two Uh, like uh, i think i missed some things like i was in, uh, unable to auscultate the abdomen uh, in that they cut my one mark and uh, i didn't ask for uh, neurology in neurology cases i didn't ask the patient to walk I sh- if I, if i told him i got got full marks in that they cut my one mark in that just um, i told you alhamdulillah i got full marks mm-hmm. 
and just share your uh, this experience i think it will help other candidates okay uh, uh, what about uh, this case about cushing uh, you uh, forgot yes, yes sir yes sir that yes okay, definitely I think this this must definitely. everyone know okay everybody yes sure 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 in my cushing it was actually a cushing syndrome it was not cushing disease but there was very very important questions uh, question that i forget to ask and the examiner i think he wanted to listen to that only so that's the reason i think he cut my my half or one mark uh, the only question i didn't ask is that are you bumping into any object so i discussed this with sir and sir told me a lot of times but at that you know at that moment people tend to forget so mm. whenever you get the cases like acromegaly or cushing or any pituitary any of you 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 feel like you have any case of pituitary just don't forget to ask this sir bumping into object so this is what what is very very important and the most important thing please uh, to everybody don't make any signs if you don't know anything hardly hardly don't even uh, say for example in my case of you know megaly with joint this uh, in abdomen case the patient was having pilar but uh, i was not able to uh, like appreciate it too much because it could be because of too much uh, disc, uh, like joint this that he was already having but i didn't mention that examiner was asking me do you you find anything else i told her no this is uh, this is like that what i perceive so don't make anything whatever you got this just tell that's it thank you so much dr vakas anything you want to share other than that someone is asking in Uh, how to prepare for short cases those who are living in bahrain any online uh, any offline courses there or not okay uh dr askar uh mm -hmm. dr askar there is a very good short courses uh, in lahore in in pakistan it's fast paces i actually personally attended that and besides uh, uh, long courses uh, courses with dr uh, with sir nadim nasim al huda you can go for it it's in lahore fast paces you can contact me i will uh, i will share it with you with everyone who can uh, go to pakistan or i think there is one course of short cases of dr sala in dubai i'm mm. not yeah but yeah that's also good but i think who have an access to pakistan definitely they should opt for dr imran babu course is uh, for short cases it's really really helpful he has a lot of pool of patients and uh, it will definitely help so dr vaka saini is testing that she has patient okay so she got busy <laughs> yeah she okay. is busy no problem okay so i want to congratulate <laughs> saini also uh, from our side okay yeah 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 you yeah. just convey our message she, she just texted me that uh, she got maybe uh, maybe she will get she will uh... um join later maybe mm. so dr mm. amra are you there uh, dr vakas just someone ask you yes yeah, sir will they give an extra time to complete session uh, if the surrogate does not understand english fairly no dr uh, priya darshi uh, they are not uh, that's the only thing i am telling you guys that bahrain center is really very very nice center the only problem is this uh, english language thing because the patients most of them they are arabic um, almost i think 90 90 95% patient i think only cardiac patient was uh, i think indian or pakistani guy just all mm -hmm. of them were arabic and from local local patients so they are they are not giving any extra time that's the reason in um, i have missed some of the examination points. so i think it's a slightly different situation from you yes correct na Yes, US, yes, yes, yes. So, just a new center. Maybe, maybe in the future they will give, but they are not ah, giving any extra time. So that's that's the only. Otherwise, uh, I will recommend everybody who is working in Middle East to please opt for Bahrain Center. It's a very, very nice center. I and uh, this one in communication also there will be no problem. No, sir, you get sir. Communication? No, they are very, very well. Okay. I don't know in uh, in Pakistan. I got a very uh, like uh, not well trained uh, surrogate. and very rude but in in uh, in bahrain they were very very well trained like most of mm -hmm. them were uh, i think house officers or interns or even nurses but they are very well trained surrogates are really good mm -hmm. so this is good 
ओके ओके सर ओके ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग नाइस लिसन योर वॉइस आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड एवरीबॉडी प्लीज अगेन डोंट जस्ट जस्ट टेक वन टू वन कोर्स विद सी इंशाल्लाह इंशाल्लाह एवरीबॉडी विल पास ओके सर ओके ओके बकास डॉक्टर अमरा आर यू देयर यस सर आई एम देयर बिग कांग्रेचुलेशन डॉक्टर अमरा हाउ आर यू सर आई एम गुड अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह how you are feeling now sir you know i'm <laughs> always saying that you know don't worry inshallah you will pass i i be hopeless very hopeless and sir kept on saying you, you know you were saying that no inshallah uh, but now i believed uh, so alhamdulillah sir mm -hmm. thank you very much sir it uh, your guidance uh, does make a lot of difference so it the communication and long cases both of them and uh, especially since you have the whole idea of what cases you know mm -hmm. coming in um, what um, area mm -hmm. so that is another that's that's very helpful sir mm -hmm. thank like, you Appa. like you do, you you already said that motor neuron disease comes in pindi center <laughs> and that <laughs> that I gave me surprise in my... when you told me <laughs> after the exam yes sir so um, and they do repeat so my exam was in pindi and um, a lot of people you know they are um, they are you know um, have different opinions about pindi center but i think the good thing is that uh, the cases the pool you know it is uh, not um, very like it we we can predict like this case which sir gave me so mm. it was uh, um, you know it's it's a, it was a long case and sir already had taught it that this case comes in pindi so it makes a huge difference if one of your long case is uh, something like that you know it already so uh, that uh, i would highly recommend that you know to go through with your cases and you take and sir one thing uh, is that your slides they are very helpful so like you, you say okay, ask these questions and uh, then go to the next because in the and if one memorizes those questions because in the exam uh, the under the pressure you can hardly recall you <laughs> other things yeah. so if you have memorized those questions like these are the questions you need to ask Uh, so if you have this ask these questions and then jump on to the next thing so that really helps your slides are very very helpful and in the last days i was revising from your slides and your um, treatment options and uh, all those things that these are the examination points so that is um, they are very helpful sir your uh, slides of all the long cases okay thank you amra so your tips about how to prepare for the exam to those candidate who are going for the exam in diet 3 how they approach this exam sir first of all i would say that every day before starting to study pray <laughs> because i personally believe it is a lot of luck and i was highly i was hopeless about it but alhamdulillah <laughs> Allah has blessed me. Uh, it's totally. It is. It is a lot of luck. I. I know a lot of people who are more competent than I am. Uh, they are struggling, but it's just your day. Um, I have failed my exam as well, so I know it. One gets very depressed, and it's very difficult. So just you know, if uh, you have to pray, that is one thing. Other than that, sir, I think. um for um, communication and long cases like um, if you know if we practice daily um, they make a huge difference like um, you yourself say that you know the questions start to come into the mouth when you have practiced so mm. uh, you cover all the recent exam cases and communication cases so that covers um, a lot of you know um, that is the main thing that communication were repeat both of my communication uh, i found i got full marks in them because i think you uh, you do um, drill that communication very well so communication is can easily be um, taken full marks if you have practiced it and um, the and, and it's the the recent scenarios which are repeated repeated so um, we can prepare communication and long cases very well with the 
with your course uh, you know and even one to one sessions they are very helpful because you know you sir knows okay you have to focus on this now you are improving now you you also you said then in the start you were like this and now you are improving <laughs> so to track he knows okay these you need to work on this investigations and things like that other than this um for uh, short cases i think um, we need to go to the hospital that is very important um because uh, in in my last days i went to the hospital to practice um, the, all the neurocardiology and all those that is very important for those especially those who are not working because you're not in the hospital so you you know these skills um, last uh, last one or two weeks are very vital if you even you do not do practice uh, you, if you visit any hospital okay super specialty hospital or any good hospital you will get lot of benefit because you have background knowledge theory, theoretical knowledge so yes, you can pick things very easily and fast also yes sir yes sir exactly last days very like exactly i agree that you need to practice listen, all those and if you know a little bit that okay these cases are uh, you know more common and then like my long my um, abdomen case was a liver transplant so it does come in <laughs> rawalpindi center one mm -hmm. of my colleague got it so i i've already you know so that helps as well so mm -hmm. a lot of this in the clinic uh, in the clinical cases as well practice and um, as dr vakas said uh, i did attend uh, imran babar's academy as well so um, he um, he has a lot of patients so in for pakistani candidates uh, that academy is i think almost everybody goes to sir's academy as well yes, for it's a, it's a blessing for those who, who are giving exam in pakistan it's yes. a very uh, it's a very good offline course and very standard means uh, it's a standard also it's not yes sir that's yeah. that's that's really so amra anything else you want to you did not face any language problem there no no sir because no. Sir, no. like all of the uh, you know the patients were uh, like this in with the patient we speak urdu so um, mm. there was no problem with that because urdu is like i'm from pakistan so that mm. was no problem but uh, yeah so that was no issue pindi center is uh, uh, like they are well organized but their long cases uh i think overall in this diet they were a bit not very straight forward uh, um but uh, yes in the lahore center when i gave in february uh, their long cases were i found they were pretty straight forward i don't know they just keep on changing so, uh, of... rawal pindi long cases are slightly complicated this is not a diagnosis wise it did yes sir exactly mm -hmm. So, and if you go to the uh, mh uh, as well sometimes i i one in one of my days uh, th there was a there was a doctor who <laughs> who actually asked us not to come because this is you cannot come and prepare so uh, that was a setback anyways we went the same day in the evening time when there were no officers there since it's a military hospital so uh, but you can always um, afic all the cardiology cases uh, were there so if i see is very good the nurses were very helpful so we i saw the cases there uh, there is a whole pool of neuro cardio all the cases were there so um, there it's it's good for practice as well to go to mh for day to day uh, amra there is a question for you in the chat box okay, uh, how many months in uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I I have been preparing for a long time. It depends what is the uh, the baseline. To be honest, if somebody is in is working and if somebody is already passed, you know, the other qualification exams like FCPS or others, so they already have a good baseline. But I think practice is with this. Like for example, if you are practicing with one colleague and one you take one online course and then you are daily practicing and you know what the cases are, then it gets uh, easy but it varies like what the baseline is in the end mm -hmm. you just have to study but yeah this uh, this is how it's it is but... uh, from person to person yes, but sir. usually orientation is required even those who has done fcps or md exam in india but uh, 
uh, orientation is required. PCS orientation is slightly different than the yes. local examination. So once you are oriented, uh, it's easy. Yes, sir. And practice with the colleague. Okay, so you have to search for a partner, good partner, uh, yes. before getting seat. So good partner is a blessing, for exam. Okay, so. And if someone is experienced, partner is there. So he is like a mentor, okay, half mentor or 75% of the mentor. So if you get a good partner, uh, it's really helpful. So Amra, what about any books? Uh, sir, books wise, um, uh, sir, I think when, if somebody is taking a course from you and they use your slides, they are more than enough. So I personally, in the end, there was so less time. And if I'm revising and closing, I would open your, uh, you know, uh, the screenshots because they have everything written in it. And or like I did study um, Rupa Visant originally, um, um, you know, just to in the start and um, uh, rider as well. But I think if your slides, if somebody follow your slide and your pattern, they're more than enough. And uh, uh, Fast Paces book is also very good. Um, that book mm -hmm. is good. As well. So because sir has written all, but I think your slides are sufficient. They don't ask very, you know, different questions and you ask questions in your, um, in your sessions as well. So they cover. So uh, otherwise Fast Paces book was another book which I did because sir has written uh, same way, like, um, you know, long cases and um, neuro section is very good um, in neurology in Sir's book as well. So thank you so much, Amra. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> I do, <didn't>, sir. <laughs> yes, but, and I would highly recommend, you know, one to one with Sir and even if somebody is starting, they should stick with Sir and as they will go, you know, it improves, you know, you can feel improvement in the uh, communication and long cases and uh, so I, that thank you so much sir so I think uh, Dr. Hina has joined Dr. Hina are you there then we will talk with Dr. Lavita so Dr. Hina uh, yes I'm here <laughs> how you are feeling now uh, very much relieved I must say, yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining our session today. Thank you very much for all your guidance and support and everything, especially your one-to-one -one sessions. They were they were very much helpful, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. Uh, uh, would you take yeah. the feedback from Dr. Levita first? Or? Oh, no, no, you can uh, continue. Okay. No. okay. Okay, okay, right, right. Okay, Um. My, uh, uh, I appeared from the Islamabad Center and uh, it was the day three of exam. My exam was on 23rd of May and it was second carousal. And when I started, I started from station number three. Um, the first one was cardio and cardio was uh, like, it, it was an easy, easy one. Uh, it was MR, mitral regurgitation. And examiners were very good and I got full marks in that station. I mean, I got full marks in all of my stations except uh, respiratory system. Uh, mm -hmm. It was all full marks and all long cases and communication skills and everything. And then the second part was neuro. Neuro was quite unexpected for me. I mean, usually when you do um, uh, these neuro stations, you are expecting upper limb examination or lower limb examination or chain limb examination, but it was, the command was examine the eyes of the patient. And the patient had optic atrophy and somebody uh, told me before going, I'm mean, like, like a month before going into the exam that uh, your, um, uh, your, that my carousal would be the second one. It would be in morning. And usually they don't give uh, fundoscopy mm -hmm. in the morning uh, for the morning candidates because they have to, you know, dilate the pupils and then they have to, the examiners, they have to uh, calibrate the cases and all that stuff. So, but for me, it was <laughs> optic atrophy. And I was quite skeptical after giving the, after that short case that I was thinking that I have, um, uh, I mean, that I have flunked the case maybe, but fortunately I got full marks in that as well. It was optic atrophy. The left pupil of the patient was dilated. He had some visual field defect as well, but I told the examiner that I can't properly formally check visual fields because the pupil is dilated and he has blurring of vision. So um, all is well that ends well. 
So I was, my start was like, uh, but I somehow managed to, you know, calm my nerves and the start wasn't very good because neuro was quite unexpected for me. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, this visual field examination and sorry, not visual field. This what was the command? Was quite the, what was the, the command? command was command was to ex examine the eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I looked at the patient's eyes, his left pupil was dilated. The midriatic was, I mean, it was dilated with midriatic. So I did the fundoscopy. Nothing was there in the right fundus, uh, but there was optic atrophy for sure in left fundus. And he had visual field defects as well. And um, But obviously, I couldn't check it formally. I told the examiner that I can't check it formally because the left because of, because the pupil is dilated and, and the patient is unable to see properly. Uh, but it went good because I got full marks <laughs> in that station as so well. So you did not examine other cranial nerve, no? only... Uh, no, 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 no. But uh, but as um, this was optic atrophy and all my viva was about optic atrophy uh, yeah. and the causes of optic atrophy, optic neuritis and all that stuff. So I, I quickly uh, checked other things like cerebellar signs, upper limb, pa. Uh, mm -hmm. I quickly checked cerebellar signs because I mean, uh, the, the, the command was only to examine the, uh, the eyes of the patient. So I, and he was a young patient. He was like, maybe in his late 20s and yeah. uh, in such young patients optic neuritis could be mm -hmm. I mean, ms could be a possibility so i quickly try to rule that out but i mean this was not as i was hoping i was hoping uh, to see to do the you know lower limb or upper limb or maybe cranial nerves but it was quite an unusual command uh, mm -hmm. for me at least um and then uh, the second station was, this was station number three. Uh, then I moved on to station number four. Uh, it was, the first was the communication skills. And the history was that uh, a young female who had given a birth to a healthy son and uh, diagnosed with scrupy streptococcal infection based upon the uh, vaginal swab flora. And uh, she, the, the the lady was given penicillin and she has mm. now developed um, SJS, Stephen Johnson syndrome. Mm. And the patient's condition deteriorated and she was then shifted to ICU and she may need ventilator. And I had mm. to explain the husband and I addressed the concerns. And the concerns were why uh, she had this reaction. And he asked me time and again that, didn't you check the allergy for penicillin? And I had to counsel him that even if we have, I mean, uh, 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 Obviously, I didn't. I didn't know that the penicillin allergy was checked or not. I couldn't tell him that yes, we had checked the penicillin allergy because nothing of that sort was given in the in the scenario. scenario. Uh, but I told no, it was not yes, mentioned. Exactly. There is a confusion. It was not mentioned. Ah, yes. Exactly. It, it it was not mentioned whether the, whether the patient had penicillin allergy before as well or whether the. But I I explained to him that Stephen Johnson syndrome can occur after you know forty eight hours of giving the because it's a hypersensitivity response and all that stuff. But the surrogate was quite, I mean, I was just thinking that his wife is dying and he looked quite cool and calm <laughs> and he was, <laughs> and, and he was more worried about, you know, um, raising this issue that you may not have checked for pancine allergy and, uh, and all that stuff. So uh, I again got full marks in that communication skill. Then the uh, next was abdomen and it was a case of, it was again very easy case renal transplant, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the patient had fine tremors. There was no gum hypertrophy at all. There were multiple scars of uh, double human catheter, and mm -hmm. there was also a fistula in his left arm. And I told the examiner that the current mode of renal placement therapy is the renal transplant, and the previous modes of, and he, he was a young patient again, and the previous mm -hmm. modes were this uh, fistula and the. Uh, and the double human catheter permacat, and uh, uh, the it was a usual case. And the examiner asked about the uh, causes which could be, um, which could lead to renal failure in a young patient. So it, it was an easy one again. I got sorry. I uh, yes, I got full marks, and I got I think nineteen out of twenty. I I I don't know where I lost one mark in that station. Then the station five was the long case, long clinical consultation, and it was hypothyroidism. And <laughs> if you remember, Doctor Hoda. Yeah. <laughs> we we practiced with you twice. twice, twice, not twice, by twice. Mistake. We practiced thyroid twice by mistake. Yes, <laughs> and it was good in a sense that I got hypothyroidism. I mean, I was so pro in taking the history of thyroid and 
ruling out all those, you know, associated <laughs> findings and everything. And he had slow leaves of ankle jerk and uh, he was an obese man and there was loss of lateral eyebrows as well. There was um, like acanthus and agricans and he had uh, some um, uh, skin tags as well and there was trunkal obesity, no bruises, used try. So it, it was a typical case of hypothyroidism and uh, my mother had history of uh, type 1 diabetes as well and the patient also had type 1 diabetes. It was mm -hmm. Schmidt's hypothyroidism. It was it was good, and I got full marks in that case oh, as well. Station great. five. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks to you. We we uh, by default practice twice now. I think grabs and uh, thrice. And yes, thrice. We, 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 <laughs> yes, uh, we indeed practice it thrice. Um, a try. I mean, uh, once uh, this hypothyroidism once and Graves disease and hypothyroidism twice. So thrice. thyroid uh, disorders we practice thrice. So it was not difficult for me at all for obvious reasons because I had practiced this so much with you. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, came station one. It was again the communication skills. Uh, the it was I mean lady was uh, lady was diabetic and she was on insulin and she was non-compliant to the medications. Um, GP was considering that she was mostly most likely not compliant with the medication, and she mm -hmm. had now developed protein urea and the GP had prescribed base inhibitors and he was worried that she may not take this medication. And the task was to explain protein urea and to stress on the compliance. And uh, again, um, uh, it was a difficult surrogate, I would say, because you know uh, you you can't be judgmental. Uh, you can't say to mm -hmm. the patient directly that you are not taking medication. So I had to, you know, um, I had to. Uh, she just kept on saying that nothing is wrong with me. I'm fine. She was adamant on this, and um, uh, I mean, I had to, you know ask her many times then you know what could be the reason of this uh, sometimes what could, could be the reason that your sugar is not being very very much well controlled and all that stuff but she was not she was really not coming on to the point and when the examiner said two minutes left mm -hmm. then I had to ask her directly that I'm really sorry to, to ask you directly but are you compliant with your medications and she then just vomited out all those concerns that yes I'm needle phobic and and uh, it was easy afterwards. Okay, so uh, but again, not taking just... insulin. She is not taking insulin. Yes, she was not taking insulin because she was needle phobic. Okay. And you always have to give the information in chunks and then check the understanding. And in three, yeah. two or three minutes, you just can't give information in chunks and check understanding. So I told the patient that I know this would be overwhelming for you. There's a lot of information that I'm providing you with. Uh, but you can always, uh, we can always book another appointment and discuss it further, and I will give you patient information leaflets. So it was uh, after that, I mean, the surrogate was a difficult surrogate, but the case for case was quite easy. And mm -hmm. uh, um, while I was talking to the surrogate, I noticed that the surrogate was looking towards the examiner time and again. Probably, uh, I mean, this, this, this is my perception. Probably the examiner was asking her to tell that you are not taking medication. Probably, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, examiner gave me full marks in that communication skill. The next one was respiratory. It was a tricky one because I mean, five of us, uh, when we came out, we all had a different diagnosis of that case. And nobody actually knew what was the diagnosis. Uh, I think the patient had pleural effusion as well, which I uh, I actually didn't miss pleural effusion. The breath sounds mm -hmm. were reduced and there was stony dull percussion in the left lower, uh, left lung base. Uh, but there were uh, so much of crepes in the left apex that in that, I mean, I, I only, I mean, uh, I thought that act of omission is better than act of commission. So I uh, deliberately didn't tell about the dullness at the lung base and uh, decreased bed sounds maybe. Uh, because I, I thought that if the examiner would ask me what else could you find, then I will tell that um, I could also find dullness in the lung base with um, stony, I mean, have a decreased breath sounds, but examiner never probed me, and he seemed to be happy with uh, with with everything which I was telling him uh, about the crepes in the lung. And but he he didn't give me good marks in that station. Yeah. That was the only station which I uh, in which I didn't get good marks. And then the station number two was again long clinical consultation. Patient was a mountaineer, and he had um, uh, hereditary thrombophilia. Mother had history of clots as well. He had hereditary thrombophilia with recurrent DVTs, 
And on examination, he had tricuspid regurgitation, he had raised JVP, loud P2, pulmonary hypertension, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to check for DVT as well, to rule out colitis, <clears throat> and uh, I had to do the cardiovascular system examination. But it, it went very well. I could uh, tell the way the examiner was asking the question. I could tell that it went very well. Yeah. Again, I got full marks in that. So, uh, what was the uh, presenting complaint from outside? Uh, presenting complaint from outside was... Um, it was very vague. I don't remember exactly. I think it was... It was shortness of breath. Okay. I think it was shortness of breath. Yes. Shortness of breath. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't remember exactly. I think it was, I mean, uh, it was a very vague presenting complaint. You just can't mm -hmm. tell uh, by looking at mm -hmm. the presenting complaint that the patient had recurrent thromboembolism. Uh, he, so he, he had recurrent pulmonary embolism. He's telling himself that he has a thrombophilia? No, 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 no. He didn't mm -hmm. tell himself. He told me that he had the shortness of breath for the last one week. Okay. Um, uh, if, if, uh, while taking history, I am in the habit of asking in very start, have you are you taking any medications for any and mm -hmm. have you ever been diagnosed with any medical condition? So mm -hmm. when I ask these questions, then he or I always ask that any medication. This you you asked you oh. guided <laughs> me to to ask like this that any medication which has been stopped recently. So mm -hmm. I asked him initially. I mean, at the very start of my uh, my interview that that have you, is there any medication that you have stopped recently? Recently, and he, he told me that he had. Stop rivaroxaban, uh, okay. and I, when I when yeah. I asked him why he was started on rivaroxaban, then he told me that six months ago he was on this mountaineering trip and he had some problem with his lungs and then he was brought down and rivaroxaban was started and a month ago he thought that he was fine he stopped rivaroxaban and for the last like ten days or fifteen days he was having freezing shortness of breath so it was clear cut from yeah. the very start that. Uh -huh. it, uh, yeah. If I would have kept all those questions till the end of the interview, I uh, then uh, you, may uh, not you, have been very much uh, focused. So you cannot yes. take much detailed history. So you know it at the beginning, so you get advantage of that. Exactly, exactly. So I was, uh, so in that way, I mean, so I, I knew that he had this pulmonary embolism and he had stopped rivaroxaban. And I had to, I mean, uh, after that point, my all the history was, you know, more focused and mm -hmm. I had to rule out the associations. Head, and uh, I ruled out hydrostromophilia and the patient told me that his mother had this history of clots. So this was quite a, a clear cut case and he had findings. He had many findings and mm -hmm. there was raised JVP and um, uh, he had tricuspid regurgitation, a murmur on the left sternal as systolic murmur, which was increasing on inspiration. And he had loud P2, he had palpable P2 as well. Okay, so he okay. had pulmonary hypertension. Uh, so man. all features of pulmonary hypertension is there? All features. And uh, again, the viva was like um, uh, the differential diagnosis. And then what else you can do for this patient? I told him that I can, I mean, after the Roxaban, if he still has recurrent thromboembolism, we can always uh, go for IVC filter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was again. I mean, uh, after uh, you can you can judge from the way the examiner is asking you questions, and uh, so uh, I thought I, I I was sure that at that point that uh, I had uh, diagnosed the case correctly, and I, my findings are correct. And after that, um, I mean, again in this case, I got twenty eight out of twenty eight uh, full marks. And both the long cases, I got full marks. Yeah. And both the communication skills, I got full marks. We know. Um, it's very good, Dr. Hina. Uh, thanks to you, uh, Dr. Hoda. Your one-to-one uh, -one sessions were really, really very much helpful. Your flow sheets, I mean, the way you guided me towards how to take a focused history, it was it was really good. It was really fantastic. I must say, your, your, your schemes, I mean, at the end of the day, you only uh, remember those schemes. And... Uh, about myself, you know, but other people don't know that I'm a dermatologist. I'm not a, I'm not into medicine since long. I did my intermediate module in medicine in 2011, and since 2014, I'm a consultant dermatologist. And mm -hmm. uh, I did my MRCT one and two in 2018, and in 2018, uh, mm -hmm. in my first attempt. And for the last six years, I had been applying for, um. Uh, a slot in paces but I couldn't get a slot and this was the first time that I got a slot but again it was a, a gap of six years and it was quite difficult for me to revise all those medicine again while I'm myself in dermatology so mm. uh, you helped me a lot your schemes they helped me a lot 
uh, your guidance. It helped me a lot. So uh, thank you very much. And I would recommend your course to everyone. And Dr. Javiria, want to ask some questions? Dr. Javiria? Uh, yes, please. Hi, first I want to congratulate you for this brilliant uh, result. So you Thank mentioned you one much, station. Oh, you're welcome. So you mentioned one station in which you got the examination of the eye. So yeah, this is a rare one. Uh, so I understand that you must have followed all those steps uh, for inspection, then visual equity, visual fields, pupils, movements. Doses. Yeah, doses. Doses. Yes. Okay. So what were your DDs at the end? Because uh, they don't expect us to give us the to give the diagnosis because they know that it's five minutes. It's, uh, it's difficult. So if we give a good list of DDs, then it's a pass. So I think it will be helpful for the candidates if you tell us uh, the DDs that were uh, given by you for this okay. case. Um, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, it was up and when I when I uh, like the fundus um uh, fundus I mean when I, when I when I did the ophthalmoscopy, the uh, disc optic disc was very bright, very shiny, and I told the examiner that this patient has uh, optic atrophy in his left eye. So it was not actually the differential. The differential was the differential of optic atrophy. The examiner straight away asked me the causes of optic atrophy. And I told him that the cause of optic atrophy in this patient, he is a young patient. It could be optic neuritis. It could be uh, uh, it could be any any uh, uh, any injury to the optic nerve, secondary to maybe toxic, maybe toxins like menthol, uh, like like methanol. I told him about uh, uh, there were visual feed defect, defect as well, but I couldn't check upon uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't do perimetry uh, properly because he had uh, because the midretic was put into his left eye and uh, his visual his vision was already blurred, quite blurred. So uh, I told him that there could be any thromboembolic phenomena in, uh, affecting his occipital lobe as well. So it was actually the differential diagnosis of optic atrophy, not the differential diagnosis of the patient. So I gave, oh, him, okay. I gave him the cause of optic atrophy. Yeah, no, it's fine. And I done. also checked it's hard to pick a finding yeah, it was hard. for most of the candidates. Yes, and yes, and it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And it was just just one eye. So if this would be some due to some toxic, I, I, I mean, I ruled out all those causes, and I, I mean, in the end, only optic neuritis uh, was left, because if this is if if this would be secondary to any you know toxic causes or any toxins or any any methanol or uh, all those stuff, it this would be bilateral optic atrophy. Mm -hmm. But the patient had unilateral optic atrophy. And his left eye only. Okay, thank you. And nowadays yeah, so in India Center also, uh, now mm -hmm. I think they have introduced this eye examination. So fundus yes. be there in the neurology station also. Yeah, because when we were giving the exam, then we had one of the candidates in Indian Center who got uh, cataract. Mm -hmm. So this is All also right. one important case for eyes, and uh, one now mm -hmm. we have got optic atrophy. So it means that we should focus on it. Like we mo most yes. of the times we just ignore the eye. We uh, don't pay attention yes. to this topic. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, and as I told you, that somebody told me that uh, people from yeah. the you know first or second grade they don't usually get fundoscopy. So I didn't pay much attention to you know causes of uh, different causes of different things. But I had some yeah. background knowledge from my from my rotation in medicine. So yeah, thankfully, no, it's, I, it's I was nice. able to well pick up <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank so you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if, regarding that cataract, sorry, regarding that cataract case, in, in, if if you get cataract, you ha also have to rule out other things like myotonic dystrophy. And yeah, if you get cataract in your exam, you should rule out other things like myotonic dystrophy. Mm -hmm. Because I had seen one of the patients of myotonic dystrophic myotonia who had doses with cataract bilateral cataract. So, so now uh, the takeaway message is that in neurology station, a simple eye examination is also coming. It came in India also recent diet, and now uh, Dr. Yes. Hina is also telling. So uh, it means a simple eye examination, including fundus, uh, could be a case in a neurology before it's not there. So I think they have recently introduced because one of the examiner also uh, told me about it that uh, in UK uh, the cases are coming like this in neurology. Okay, but now it's I think is confirmed from from Dr. Hina case also. 
uh, that now in neurology station you can expect to do fundus examination. Yeah, and I think that uh, the topics for eyes uh, are uh, retinitis pigmentosa, optic mm. atrophy, mm. <clears throat> cataract, unilateral or bilateral, and diabetic retinopathy. So I think this is the list of the most common cases that can appear in eye examination. Mm -hmm. Correct. And internuclear ophthalmoplegia as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And ptosis unilateral or bilateral. Yes, that is myasthenia gravis. Yeah, Horner's syndrome. syndrome. Yeah, and oculomotor nerve dystrophy. Mm, myotonia dystrophy. My myotonia dystrophy. Mm. So these are they are the topics on which uh, we have to focus. Yes, in yes, neurology. You yes, you must, and I can also make your schemes for this eye examination. And whenever you are examining, I mean, whenever you find any problem with one one cranial nerve, always. Uh, always do the examination of one cranial nerve above and one cranial nerve below that. Uh, correct. Right? Yeah, if, I totally agree with you. Nerve, if it's seventh cranial nerve, always do sixth yeah. and eighth. Right? Yeah, yeah, sixth, eighth, and no, uh, sixth, uh, third, three, four, six, uh, seventh. No, no. If it's nerve. no. Uh, if it's, for example, if it's seventh cranial nerve, always do sixth mm -hmm. and eighth. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. I just started okay. telling you the important like thing you for yes, examination. Yes. yes, like in this case, like in this case, like the the, the command was to examine eyes, and it, it it really took me a little while to do, you know, uh, uh, to do the fundoscopy. It took me much time to do the fundoscopy. I couldn't check the cranial nerve, but I checked the fifth nerve and seventh nerve uh, very quickly, very very quickly, and then I checked for the cerebellar signs to look for any evidence of, you know, uh, if the patient is having. He was a young patient. I was thinking that he might be having yeah. uh, stop taking so, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Paces is a tale of schemes. So yes, we just have to make a plan uh, for the common cases that can appear in exams. And you are right that if there is an eye case, then we have to think of the neurological signs that can be connected to it. For example, cerebellum or uh, what else? That yeah. is the most common and one. Yes, mm -hmm. and examiners, and uh, uh, most of the times, examiners are very good. Examiners are very, uh, very, very helping, and they probe you if you miss something. Um, but sometimes the examiners may not probe you. Like in my respiratory case, the examiner didn't probe me, and I, I deliberately didn't tell the finding of uh, this uh, dullness in the lung base. And I was thinking that if examiner would probe me, I would say that I also found the stone bell percussion node and free that sounds in left lung base. There was also a scar, uh, mm. a very faint scar, which which most of the people around missed uh, that scar. Um, but the examiner never asked me about uh, uh, about any other findings. And he seemed to be happy with, uh, with, with whatever I was telling to him. And my viva just moved on from whatever I was telling him. So I thought that uh, this might be the only finding. But when I... When I looked at my detailed mark sheet, uh, I lost many marks, and I lost marks only in my respiratory case. Yeah, actually, they expect us to mention the findings which are positive. For example, yes. and scar is the is one thing that shouldn't be missed on examination. And you know, you are lucky that at least you had an examiner who was probing you because I had an examiner in the neurology station who had uh, hearing aids. And he was just asking me, can you come close so I can hear you? Okay. So I was I, I, that he's going to pick a wrong answer, even if I'm giving the correct one, because right, he can't hear right. properly. Right, right. The examiner in my respiratory session never proved me, never proved me. He never asked me what else I had to find on examination. So I thought yeah. that probably, because I, you, you shouldn't make up the findings. Act of commission is, is way worse as compared to act of commission. So, okay, thank you for your lovely yeah. input. And uh, yeah, someone asked about the important eye cases. So I'm just going to write it down in the chat box. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hina, for joining thank us. Thank you very much, Dr. Huda. Thank, thank you once again for all your guidance and help and support and everything, especially for thyroid <laughs> cases. <laughs> it was a mistake. <laughs> No, it was not a mistake. It was very good for me. I was so much confident while I was. I was oh, it's it's, it's right. Now I have done it twice. Usually, we, usually, I am writing what cases uh, we are doing, but it is from Allah, I think, 
Hey, you want to yes, be... exactly. <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. So, uh, and Dr. Lavita, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry, we keep you waiting. So, <laughs> uh, no, 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 congratulations no, no, no. for passing your MRC uh, exam. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. How are you, sir? Uh, fine. So, how you are you feeling now? Uh, it feels surreal <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's an entirely different feeling and <laughs> you get more respect in your hospital now. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, definitely. Uh, and it was your first attempt and you do it. Okay, so very nice and very short uh, period of time, I think. Within yes, sir. So, uh, so I, I got my seat confirmation somewhere in the mid of uh, March, applied in Feb and got confirmation in mid of March and exam was in last week of May. So I, I, I am doing currently my residency, full-time residency as well. Uh, at, uh, uh, one of the tertiary care set up in Karachi. So my resources were very limited with a limited uh, time. So I joined uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nassim's course in, in May. In the, in the April was a bit hectic one. In my hospital, I had uh, not enough offs and I had to take leaves in May. So I had to cover for May in April as well. So I was doing double work in April along with some time for studying. Uh, it was really hectic. So very uh, limited resources with limited time. But with the correct guidance, I was able to go through. So the credit goes to Dr. Nassim uh, uh, undoubtedly because uh, uh he knows when I joined the course and how unprepared I was. And uh, I had actually forgotten some medicine. I Although I do have a background of two years of medicine. And currently I'm in my fifth year of training. So basically I had left. I did my IMM three years or four years back somewhere. So uh, I was trying to I, And the part one was. Uh, I did my part two last year at the MRCP2. So regarding resources, very limited. One was the online course with Dr. Nassim and I joined in the first week of May. We did it uh, till the last day of exam. He was kind enough to uh, give me some extra classes on weekends because he knew I wasn't very well prepared. And he gave me some very uh, uh, point on tips which helped me in the exam. So I did not pass with a... Uh, I did pass but not with very... Uh, uh, go, uh, high marks but uh, enough for the uh, pa passing the exam so the resources would include search case uh, search course for communication it was only search communication i tried notes when we used to do one is to one session and even when the other candidate was doing this session i used to do it uh, with uh, myself so when sir used to give us time to prepare for the case i used to note points if i was the candidate at this time what questions i might have asked what scheme i might have uh, uh, prepared in my mind so communication I, I did it this way and i read uh, there was a book other than doctor before joining sir's course i was reading a book the al rof pacemaker of uh, the uh, for communication in long cases it's an easy book a small book can be covered easily. It did, did give me some background, but the major bulk of communication was covered by Dr. Nassim. I did not read any other book, not even writer in me. I had no time and I did not uh, wanted to get more confused. So I just stuck to whatever sir said, whatever scenario we have. We have fixed scenarios and we have to apply those schemes in different scenarios. So the major points remain the same. There might be some plus minus but if you stick on that scenario you keep some points in your mind so you you can if you are able to do any case with the, these things in your mind uh for the long case again i only did uh, with dr nasim Huda, and i was uh, reading uh, so the other book which i did for long case was the uh, of the local author dr imran babar which majority of the pakistani candidates do read so I bought his book, the first edition one, although the second one is uh, more uh, organized. And uh, uh, basically, it's 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 how he teaches. So he has made this, that book accordingly. So if you're doing that short cases, a bit of history, uh, examination of the long can be covered from this. But overall, uh, sir scheme, again, I used to do the same. Whenever he used to give any case, I used to jot, uh, jot, uh, jot down some points. What do I have to ask? How to ask? And what examination point? These most important ones, which I don't have to miss in that uh, in on my paper. And 
obviously in examination you uh, during the paper during the in the examination hall uh, there is no time of looking at the paper but uh, if you have this that habit of noting that points in your head or on the paper you tend to do it in the, uh, on the exam day also there are uh, some points like clinical judgment and also we tend to forget these uh, during our because our focus lies in finding a diagnosis and covering all the history so we tend to lose marks in uh, clinical judgment part so that paper helps uh, that making points outside helps in this regard because sometimes if the patient has some history of bleeding or anything which might have some uh, you have to explain the patient about some medicine which might be very important you have to explain some danger signs so you make points outside regarding that to these three or four points i have to cover during my concerns or during my uh, safety netting so you have marks for this and it's very easy to forget those during that tension in the exam so one or two tips regarding that and uh, the uh, short cases again uh, whenever you are living try to go to the uh, tertiary care setups the specialist setups for uh, wherever you are so i am in karachi i went to uh, nicbd which is the national institute of cardiovascular diseases i i, I did my short cases of cardiology from there for neurology i went to some other setup for uh, respiratory i went to another setup so practice because in uh, the uh, the more practice you do and also during the examination not just practice get a partner and uh, just uh, uh, present your findings to the partner because uh, sometimes you know uh, what you've got in the exam but you are unable to speak through it because you haven't practiced it enough so it's important to uh, make a scheme whatever pattern you like either in the forward or in the a reverse pattern some tend to present the findings and later on go to the definite diagnosis some put on the diagnosis before and then they move to the points which are uh, explaining that uh, diagnosis or which are favoring that diagnosis so either pattern would work but stick to one pattern make your pattern that i have to move around this pattern and only and i don't have to uh, switch so these were the very important points so hardly 15 to 20 days of uh, intense hard work and uh, it almost seemed impossible for me that i would clear in the first attempt and don't say that you did not get good marks okay 138 is not a bad marks at all okay, okay. <laughs> the <main laughs> thing is, this exam is not about the marks correct is about to cover all seven skills okay and to pass in every skill correct yes. so yes, that sir. is the main thing okay yes, uh, candidate uh, get 151 and they they fail in the exam yes sir okay so uh, in your center only uh, this diet only one candidate fail with one marks okay she got 100 uh, means around 50 correct okay. so this okay. happen so uh, the skill is that that you should pass overall correct na yes sir uh, so you did very well okay so you understand the skill that you have to pass in the seven all skill okay and you have to give importance to every skill because if you keep on asking questions examining and you left the concern so you will fail in the one skill so this yes, is sir. not uh, so well done doctor i think lavita you did very well okay and uh, okay and uh, we must learn from your example that uh, uh, anyone can pass in one month preparation when you started with me okay i was not feeling well when you did the uh, case with me i feel myself that uh, no i have to work hard for you okay so i used to do the cases with you on the weekend okay uh, just i spared some time for you because i was not feeling well okay but the good okay. thing is that that you have a background knowledge okay so it help you easily recover okay so okay. when we did our last two or three session i was confident okay that you can clear this exam okay and uh, you did it very well doctor okay so passing so sir the the the, the course we did around four uh, four days just before my exam when we were doing one to one and that day i remember i just got back from the academy doing my mock and uh, the mock mm. didn't go very well and we did a long case at that time and i did i did got to the diagnosis but i was asking questions which was mm. actually uh, so that day you told me that uh, you 
have to go to the examination part early and if you get to the diagnosis do not uh, go here and there and just try to finish the major parts of the history and go to the uh, examination part so that thing actually helped me to cover both of my stations timely because i was having problem with time management as well in the long cases i got full marks in one of my long cases which i had never thought uh, because in that scenario, I did history of five or six minutes. Initially, I went to examination. I did some four, five, four, four minutes examination. I came back, asked some more questions. And uh, then uh, the uh, surrogate guided me to try to uh, confuse me. And the, she gave me then some extra heart history as well. So I again, went to the uh, patient and, and I did the cardiovascular as well because I had enough time. So uh, uh, just... Uh, uh, and then I came back, I asked, again. I had so much time, I came back, I asked more questions. And then the when you say that you have to keep your two minutes time for the concerns and the, because they do tell you before at 13 minutes that you have two minutes, that, mm -hmm. that is the ideal time for concerns. And two minutes are more than enough for three concerns that you told me. So mm -hmm. you have to cut short your concerns so that every concern is addressed. So I did that part because I had that thing in my mind that I have to cover three questions at least. So I have to counsel her in that way. Because the obviously it's the surrogate tries to prolong the conversation and they try to mm -hmm. take you here and there. I felt the 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 surrogates were a bit rude in uh, the my communication parts and the uh, long cases part, and the examiners were not giving very good. Uh, other than the foreigners, the <laughs> locals were not giving very good expressions. So uh, luckily, so yes, luck was in my favor uh -huh. that day, one of the long case. We did also fever history a day before. Uh -huh. And I got fever, a, a fever and some B symptoms were given outside. And with the long history, I knew there was something uh, malignant going on with the patients. And then mm -hmm. when I inquired more, and uh, I got the diagnosis immediately in four or five minutes, I knew uh, what I will find in the examination. So I directly... Went there, found it, spoke about it. The viva went very well. And it was luckily uh, related to my field. So I got myeloproliferative disorder, CML. So, <laughs> so uh, that's why the viva went very well. We fever, a fever with infective endocarditis with you. I think one day before. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So even I ruled out. So the, yes, with fever and spleen. So I did the cardiovascular as well. So to find any murmur or so. So I did rule out. I did tell them. So, uh, but there was something which was pointing more towards CML, which I don't remember, but I did rule out infective endocarditis because I had that thing in my mind because, and uh, so the viva went very well because uh, that was again my field. So I, I was comfortable about it. The communication scenarios, one was pretty straightforward. The, there was about... Uh, there's a young male around 40, 45 with a family history of chronic liver diseases. And he just now got diagnosed with uh, CLD with a side. He basically had abdominal discomfort for which he got some tests and the tests were fine. But the ultrasound showed that he had ascites. And we had to counsel him about uh, CLD and, uh, and the, the, the cause in his scenario was obesity, metabolic syndrome. So we had to counsel about lifestyle changes and all about CLD, the prophylaxis, the varicel part, the decompensation part, the complications, and everything related. So uh, uh, when I was doing that scenario, uh, the surrogate was not uh, uh, was not giving any expression. So I didn't. Uh, at, at my side, I thought that I had covered every point. But uh, after the part, that part, uh, I felt that because he wasn't giving very good expressions, I might have missed something. But no, I got full marks in that uh, station. So do not go with the, uh, uh, just uh, focus on your uh, pre preparation, what you've done, be confident and don't try to be nervous because nervousness uh, would lead you nowhere. It's about uh, being confident at that time that uh, helps you and that when you are calm, your brain works uh, better than you are nervous so that helped me the the abdomen part the abdominal examination went uh very well the viva went good and the other long case was a bit vague one none of my uh, uh the other candidates in my carousal was able to find the diagnosis that had, he was some around 40 45 gentlemen with history of tremors in six months Although the, the uh, surrogate said he has tremors every time. But when I was examining the patient, I couldn't find any tremor. 
I try to do the cerebral R scheme, the Parkinson scheme, the Wilson's also look for Wilson's and everything. It was a very difficult and a vague when I don't think anybody got the case from uh, my carousal. We did not discuss much. We left as soon as the uh, case ended, but it was uh, very tricky. I still don't know what it was, but I did not get to the diagnosis, but I completed the station. I did the maximum examination. I tried to address the concerns. I did the other parts so I scored in that uh, thing. So even if you don't get to the diagnosis, you still the, have your exam in your hand and you can, if you do well in your other examination, you still can pass it. So that's that's a good point about it because uh, mm -hmm. it's just not, all, all, the case is not about getting to a diagnosis. It's about everything else as well. So try to get as much you have left in your plate. So I wasn't happy after that because that was the second station. So I started with abdomen and communication followed by this uh, tremors part. So I wasn't happy after tremors and I was just praying at that I get uh, the other long one goes what in my was the age, uh, What was the age of the he person? He was around 40. So he was around 40. Okay. And tremor of both head or one? So, so he says the tremor was everywhere, both in the legs, in the hands, but the patient had no tremors. I, okay. the, he looked like a patient. There was not a surrogate. He was a patient, but uh, his uh, hmm. he was not a typical case of any uh, disorder. There might uh, be some mixed, okay. might be some atypical findings which I might have missed. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, because there were uh, with, uh, different candidates with different answers for that, and nobody was sure about hmm. it. So okay. then moving on to the next one, I got respirate communication. So the again, I believe the communication part was a bit tricky. There was this lady who recently got, got diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid arthritis and she was advised method for exit and uh, two weeks ago and now she's here to tell you that i haven't taken method because mm -hmm. i want to become pregnant so she kept on probing me what else can i take what else can i take what else can i take so i remembered from our discussion that we don't have to tell any uh, name of the medicine and we have to uh, refer her to the specialist she's joint specialist so maybe that part was about uh, probing the candidates about to tell any name of the drug uh, and uh, I, because for, uh, majority of the time in that station, she was moving in a circle and coming to this point again and again. And I tried to cover the other points, the uh, other concerns, because she had this only main concern and she was not ready to tell any other concern. So I, and, uh, I, so I, I got uh, 18 out of 20, I guess, in that uh, scenario. So maybe I did the... the the right thing not telling about any name of the medicine thing. so i did good although uh, after that uh, again i was unsure did i not tell anything did i but i think that this was about not telling disclosing the name of any medicine the mm -hmm. respiratory part uh, went uh, i thought i did good uh, but uh, it was uh, the uh, I, I, I believe it was a copd case with some exacerbation i told i, I told everything about it but uh, maybe because I didn't get very good marks in respiratory, I missed the case maybe. But uh, that's okay because I covered very well in the long case. The immediate next was a long case with CML. So I scored full in it. And uh, the neuro and the cardio part also I got full. So uh, that saved all together. So a few points is about... Uh, so basically my respiratory and one of the long. So despite that, I managed to pass. So uh, take home points. So even if you manage to, uh, uh, your one of the long case goes up and down and even one of the short cases, you still have margin to pass. So that's a, a plus point. We should focus on that and not lose hope about it. And at the end of the day, definitely it's, uh, luck because, uh, uh, sometimes you uh, see things but you are unable to vocalize at that stress moment uh, but the good thing I was calm uh, during that uh, my exam although uh, I'm a very anxious person but I, I, I was calm because I had these things in my mind which sir has guided me and I used to make notes and sirs I used to uh, write the, the points for example we did some hand pain whatever cases we did the pointers, the uh, uh, immediate questions to ask so that it leads to your diagnosis. Because once you have your diagnosis, you are confident and the case is yours, your station is yours. And now you have to just play around and uh, just complete your time. 
because it's all about getting a diagnosis in the long run because then uh, you uh, you know you will be able to uh, get a lot of marks so uh, the immediate questions are important practicing is very important and uh, limited uh, resources i think would be better because the more you read the more you get confused so for long cases i did only search scores for and the communication also bit read in the uh, bit on the book i mentioned and then nothing else and uh, i did uh, attend a, a course the lahore course which dr vakas and dr ra also mentioned about it so it's a very good course anybody in pakistan i think would definitely should definitely go and benefit from the course i did uh, the both the long and the mock one so uh, that's about it and uh, good luck everybody who's uh, appearing and uh, definitely uh, i would uh, i would recommend everybody to take search course not uh, obviously should be taken a bit earlier i took a bit uh, late because then you uh, get more confidence if you join the course earlier you have more command so uh, and uh, if you do that uh, do search course and you take good notes uh, from your course and you can revise it again and again i don't think there is a need for any other book for in that because i didn't read any writer me or upa person i did take up got pdfs of all because i was uh, stressed out but uh, i didn't get time and i'm glad i didn't and because i was stuck to few resources one was the cases for pieces and the uh, sirs academy and uh, dr imran's book because this is how he taught in the, about the short cases so it covered some viva part as well that's it thank you so much uh, dr lavita for uh, such a nice <laughs> you elaborated everything okay uh, regarding the exam and how to prepare so thank you so much okay yes. i wishing you a best of luck for your future okay thank you sir you did very one, well one 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 just was just one thing anybody who wants to go for the exam and even have not got the seat i would like to uh, tell them to at least join something to just to get a know how of the exam because uh, if you get a seat and you have two months and you don't have much idea about the exam it's uh, difficult though although i had appeared for the first time but i had uh, i i knew about paces because i had i uh, joined an academy in one of my uh, vacations and i had time at that time and i was preparing in my mind that i have to do paces at one time so i spared some time for the academy i went i got some i uh, met some new people they used to practice i, I saw them practicing about the long and so uh, some passive learning also helped me in that so even if you are not an active uh, candidate of the paper you don't know what have the exam uh very soon but try to listen as much because sometimes passive learning also helps so even if two people are practicing just join them sit with them and listen to them because this will feed few things in your mind so that thing also help uh in my case and one of the the uh, one of my so, uh, i also got to know about dr nasim ulota from one of my friend who passed using his academy the, the dr nabil elias so he uh, mm -hmm. told me about you and it is from him that i uh, learned about the initial because he used to practice in your way and that's how i got to know uh, how to do these cases and when then i joined the course i got more command so i'm glad that he told me about you thank you so much dr lavita so anyone has any questions to ask to dr lavita or anyone so i think is yeah, i had a question sir from uh, delta uh, uh, how are you sir are you fine uh, yes yes how are you pranam sir i'm fine <laughs> uh, sir to... i want sir, i wanted to ask to lavita that uh, uh, i think uh, there was a difficult long case uh, long clinical consultation so uh, when the um, target asked you about uh, what was uh, his concern about his concern then what did you tell about your concern that what is wrong with him so because i didn't have a diagnosis so he asked yes. me that uh, what is happening with me so i guess i have few things in my mind but uh, we'll get uh, more tests and then i'll be able to because i have nothing so i couldn't say anything i just i just said we'll do more tests on you and it's difficult to say at the moment and as soon as we get some results we'll i'll sit again and talk to you and then the immediate next question was 
will i be able to get cured so i i did get some idea that there is some hereditary condition which is going on with because that was the next question so again my answer was the same because i cannot mm -hmm. make any answer because the examiner knew i i had nothing in my mind <laughs> and uh, so that's okay uh, it's better to say uh, the truth in, uh, instead of uh, uh, going here and there and lying about it so mm -hmm. i uh, during my viva part i did, did tell him that uh, these these signs are favoring this this these these are favoring this this but uh, cannot exactly get to one and i did mention some deities but i did not get to a uh, diagnosis because there were some mm -hmm. signs but there was nothing which was going in one direction some mixed features with it there was some wasting uh, at the end of the, the the patient did not show tremors at any point during the examination or before the examination. Just when I was about to complete the station, I was addressing the concerns. I noticed because he was in my field of vision, I was talking to the surrogate. I noticed some uh, tremors in his hand, although they were not there during the examination or while the patient was resting even. And then they got suddenly. So there was some uh, maybe Korea or no, I'm not sure. Even I'm not sure. So. But uh, I did not make uh, any false uh, findings. I just told them, so this is what I got, this is what I got. So it okay. was a hard one and uh, definitely, but I, I compensated with the second long one and the other communications one. So that's okay if you miss one, try to get I the other mask. Till I missed one and see that's why I'm uh, asking you about that. I'm really afraid about what will happen. Sorry? It is not like that, okay? Uh, you should not worry for that. It happened. It means many candidates, it's happened. And that they do, do not get exact diagnosis. But uh, uh, don't make uh, means wrong information. Give wrong information is not good. Better to say the truth uh, that at this moment, I don't know Okay, exactly what is happening with you. We will run some test and then we will discuss uh, Okay, that you required for the test or not and what is the uh, cause of your condition. Like Levita told, I think it's a good idea. Yes, sir. I think she did very good at that situation. Mm -hmm. Because examiner anyhow know that you don't know the diagnosis. So better not to say a uh, wrong thing, giving wrong information that you might not get. Because at least you are addressing the concern. So uh, his concern you are addressing, you are not giving any wrong information. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining our session today, particularly those candidates who spared some time and came to uh, for today's session. Okay, and thank you so much, everyone, and Dr. Javiria Iqbal also, and everyone for joining our session today. And we had a very good discussion. So we'll have our uh, free session coming on either Saturday or Sunday. Okay, so we'll try to see you all again in our free session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Uh, no, I don't think, doctor, that you should say that I will contact consultant uh, because you are the one who are uh, the, talking to the surrogate. In communication, definitely you will do it. Okay, because you are representing the consultant. Here, I don't think it's a wise decision to say that I will talk to the consultant. Better to say that because you have examined consultant has not examined the case, correct? So uh, you just need to say that uh, at this moment, I don't know exactly what is happening with you. Uh, we, we will run some test, okay? And uh, then we will discuss how we are going to manage it. Okay? And you required any further test or not. But in communication, you mean, correct, doctor. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, anyone has any questions you can ask in our uh, group also okay and uh, those candidates who have uh, we have a paid telegram group uh, where we are uploading our videos regularly okay so you will get uh, videos of more than 100 scenarios okay uh, if you will join in the month of june and from day one you will be able to listen all the video as per your convenience okay for whole month you can take a subscription for one month two months you can extend it for second month also so 
uh, this is a thing we try to do it okay so if uh, anyone want to join you can join as a listener anytime and you will be able to assess the more than 100 uh, cases of consultation and communication valid for one month so thank you so much uh, so see you on coming saturday or sunday